so I'm a professor of clinical oncology and neuro-oncology here in Leeds. Um, I worked in London up until 2011 um, and then I was invited here to Leeds to head up the academic neuro-oncology group in the clinic and in the lab. Leeds was a great fit for me. Um, there was already clearly a lot of investment in Leeds in terms of building up uh, a laboratory activity in neuro-oncology and of course it's got a very good reputation particularly for its oncology and its radiotherapy work uh, so it seemed perfect really uh, for somebody like me to come along and work both in the clinic um, and to take up a role in the, uh, in the laboratory. I think it's very important for patients to come in, into an environment that feels very positive for them and I think a bright modern building uh, with lots of positive activity uh, is really what patients uh, want to see. So I think the Bexley Wing uh, delivers that. It delivers the right space and the right atmosphere for patients to come in and really help them cope with uh, what is usually quite a difficult part of their uh, part of their disease. Of course it's always very difficult to have to tell people that they've got any form of cancer um, but I think particularly with brain cancer it's difficult because the expectation often these days is that there are effective treatments for a lot of cancers. Uh, so a patient's expectation is often that you'll be able to give them a long list of potential treatments that you can try but unfortunately in brain cancer that's not the, that's not the case so we have to explain that we do have treatments but most of the treatments that we recommend actually are disappointing in terms of what they deliver to patients and we actually don't have any treatment approach that can cure the majority of these patients. So there are lots of re reasons why brain cancer is a particularly challenging tumour to deal with. First, it's not very common, um, so that makes it difficult to collect information, and collect uh, tissue. Um, it's difficult because surgically it's a challenge. It's not a well circumscribed tumour that can easily be completely removed. So we know that even after the best surgery, uh, there are tumour cells left behind uh, and that's a challenge. It also seems that there's something intrinsic to these cancer cells that makes them able to resist our standard treatments so they seem very good at surviving after radiotherapy and after chemotherapy uh, so they nearly always manage to grow back uh, despite our best efforts with standard treatment so uh, it really is a very challenging disease. So the approach we're taking using viruses to try and treat brain cancers is based on the idea that we should be able to use the body's immune system better to treat cancers um, and that principle has been established actually in several tumour types already using different sorts of immunotherapy. Um, the approach that we're taking in the brain is to use harmless viruses uh, that we know don't cause any problems in the rest of the body but get taken up by the tumour and promote a local immune response. Um, and once the virus arrives in the tumour, it gets taken up by the tumour cells. The tumour cells are a bit more sensitive to the virus than normal cells because they lack some of the normal antiviral um, protective mechanisms. So they take the virus up, the virus divides um, and then promotes a local immune reaction. And so in attacking the virus, the body's immune system is also woken up uh, to attacking the cancer cells. Um, and this approach has been thought about for some time, actually. Uh, but in the past, it was always thought that you had to directly inject agents like viruses to brain tumours because they wouldn't get there any other way. And but what we've demonstrated recently, and the exciting bit of this research really, is that we've shown that if you give the viruses just by a straightforward injection into a vein, uh, they can be delivered to the tumour that way. Um, we think that's because they get carried in the white blood cells in the bloodstream. Um, and those cells deliver them very effectively to the tumour site. So that's quite exciting because uh, it means that we could use perhaps a variety of different uh, viruses in the same way and that we wouldn't have to use direct injections uh, to the brain. Uh, we can just give them by injections as you would with lots of other drugs. Uh, in the meantime, we've set up several other studies um, to see how we might be able to use these viruses. Um, so we've got a study that we're hoping to start very soon which adds this virus treatment, so viral injections, into standard of care. So as well as having standard surgery and then radiotherapy and chemotherapy, patients in the study will also in addition uh, get an injection of this virus. And within that study we'll test whether those patients tolerate the combined treatment and then whether there's any signal that they do better than patients who just get standard of care. So we're very excited about a new study that's um, recently been funded through the John Moulton Charitable Foundation. This is for patients who've got recurrent brain tumours. 
So they're patients who've been through standard of care, so they've had surgery and radiotherapy and chemotherapy and the tumour's growing back. Um, and they're a patient group where we desperately need some new ideas. Um, and the study that we've set up is to treat these patients with a second course of radiotherapy. And we're limited in the dose of radiotherapy we can give second time round, but we're going to add to that this uh, viral treatment. And we hope that the combination then of radiotherapy with the additional viral treatment, which will activate the local immune system, in combination uh, will really provide a novel way of trying to control these tumours that have managed to grow back. Getting this sort of work from the laboratory into the clinic takes a huge amount of resource and so we're very grateful for donations that would support the laboratory team, either with technical support or with new researchers. Um, this is a great opportunity as well for clinicians or scientists who are interested in doing PhDs, so who are coming into training positions and who want to work in a field that's really got some clinical relevance. But equally in the clinic it needs a lot of resource to support these patients through studies. They need extra clinic visits, they need um, extra support and they need to be closely monitored. Um, so in the clinic we need uh, specialist nursing staff, research nurses um, and equally in that context there's an opportunity for clinicians who want to do clinically based research to get involved with, uh, with these studies. Um, so these donations potentially can support the whole pathway of this research from the laboratory right through to the point where we're treating patients.